Let's welcome in Keenan Forney of the Dash Performance Center in Georgia, former offensive lineman for the Atlanta Falcons, who's been training with Andrew Thomas in this offseason. Keenan, you got John Schmelk and Paul Dettino uh, up here in different parts of New Jersey. Welcome to the program, and, and first and foremost, I hope you and your family and everybody around you is safe and healthy. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you all for having me on the show. Yeah, it's great to have you, Keenan. And, uh, you know, guys like you, I think, are great to talk about, talk to. Because if I'm not mistaken, you were a seventh-round pick, right? And you had to work your way onto the field and really earn it and, and use technique and, you know, training and all that to, to earn your way onto the field. And I think guys like you that had to go through that are the perfect type of guys to talk to about getting offensive linemen ready to play. So let's start with the real basics. Uh, how long have you been working with Andrew, and, and how did you hook up with him? Uh, I just started uh, training guys about maybe three years ago. Had a couple high school kids uh, that I was coaching when I was at Brookwood High School. They uh, came to me and were, you know, wanting to get some help, wanting to get better, and I'm all about that. You know, I like to see young people succeed, especially if they want to do more than what's required outside of their workouts. And, uh, you know, I got started with those guys. They're going off to college, respectively. I'm proud of them. Um and I started working with Andrew a few months back, right before the draft, and uh, he's been a pleasure to work with ever since, man. Keenan, can you give us an idea of what it is that you're doing with him, the kinds of drills that you're able to go through? And I suppose there's also some mental preparation that, that you do with him as well. Yes, sir. Um, well, the different drills I do with him are based on the style of offensive line play that I coach. You know, you got different line coaches, they teach different styles, sort of like a a professional prize fighter. You know, you know, you got Floyd Mayweather with, Mayweather with his shoulder roll, and, you know, you got some guys like Mike Tyson. They try to come inside and work the body offensive line. You know, I teach with the high hand carry. Some guys teach low, but I got to teach the style that worked for me, the style that I was taught by Mike Cavanaugh, who's now at Syracuse University over there in upstate New York, you know, and I learned it from him. And, you know, through experience, trial and error on the next level, I've been able to kind of take that style and add my own little things to it. So as far as working with Andrew, I work a lot of uh, I work a lot of hand drills, a lot of punch drills, you know, with your eyes, you know, because your eyes, you know, your hands will hit what your eyes will see. So I also incorporate that with a lot of uh, footwork drills as well, you know, uh, different little soccer ball movement type stuff just to get his footwork right so he can keep his arches on the ground, keep his balance right down the middle, and he's not falling any, you know, if he has to redirect on someone, he's not falling out the window. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's able to keep his balance right down the middle and redirect with him and keep his hands on him and keep him locked out and keep a little separation. So the style I've been working with with Andrew is trying to get him to get his hands up, use them hands a lot more because he's going to need it in the East. And <laughs> different, depending on what type of rusher he gets, you know, you got – the different types of rushers out there. You got your guys that are instinct rushers who they don't know what they're going to do till they get to you and they just come up with it. So they're looking for a weakness. Or you got your guys that are predetermining what they're doing. So with film study, things like that, you can kind of figure out what they're doing based on their foot, you know, their, uh, how they're lined up on you or where, you know, what shade they're getting in, what, uh, if their inside foot is up or back, you know, and then you got your other guys that just kind of, uh, uh, you got your predetermined rushes, you got the instinct rushes, and then you got the guys, they just, uh, they go off of you. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So I've been working a lot of different little things with them just to get them ready for all those guys. John, let me follow up on that one sure. point that Keenan just talked about because Sam Pittman, who was his offensive line coach at Georgia, is now over at Arkansas. When we had him on the program, I said, Sam, if you could hold on to Andrew Chalmers for at least another year, what would be the thing that you need to, to work with him on? And one of the things that he said is that he did not teach necessarily keeping the hands high with that punch that he was probably going to want to use in the NFL and that the Giants would have to try to teach him about. So let me specifically address that with you because you just mentioned that. How hard is that to learn? Can he do it in just a few months of your tutelage? And how effective do you think that will be for him? Well, I believe it will be effective for him because – you can't come out and show guys the same thing. You got to give them different looks, you know. And the third type of rusher that you'll get that I forgot to mention was your setup guys, you know, guys that are kind of coming half speed at you. And next thing you know, they're giving you 
move and they've been setting you up all game and they're lulling you to sleep. And then now next thing you know, they're coming at you with warp speed with something. So you've got to come out there and show them different looks. You know what I mean? Sort of like when you're watching the firefighters get in the ring, they'll come out one way and then the next round they're showing something else just to keep you off balance. You know, you've got to give those guys different looks, you know, like hands high or maybe an inside hand up a little bit higher or setting a guy and punching his outside shoulder and then coming back with that inside uh, with that inside hand, you know, kind of a one-two combo, you know, one-two real quick. You got to give them something different or else they'll figure you out, you know. They're watching tape too, you know what I mean? They're watching <laughs> tape. They're looking at, you know, down and distance, and they're trying to figure out, okay, you know, let me set him up with this. Because as the game gets going, he starts opening his hip. I'm going to set him with speed, speed, speed outside. Now I'm going to set him with a hard up the field and then dab step and cross chop him and come back inside. You've got to give them different looks just like they're giving you different looks. You know, Keenan, it's playing the game. It's playing the game. Like they're playing a the game with you, you got to play a game with them. It's, it's the game within a game. And, and, and one thing you mentioned, Keenan, was balance. And there was one thing, and Paul and I loved Andrew coming out. We thought he was the most poor ready offensive lineman in the draft. But I think, Paul, if there was one consistent um, criticism that we heard about his play at Georgia was he would get off balance a little bit too much, maybe get a little too much of a lean forward and, and then lose his balance a little bit. You mentioned that in your first answer. What are some of the things you're doing uh, to, to help him work on that balance? And, and do you see some improvement in that area in the time you've been working with him the last few months? I see tremendous improvement in him. Like, let's, let's, let's be clear about this. Like, Andrew is a very smart football player. Like, one thing that I've noticed with him is that, you know, when I show him something on film, that, which is what I do when I'm working with guys, I film every drill because just like in the NFL or college, as soon as you come off the field, you're watching tape so you can correct it. Well, I correct it right there on the field. So I'll show it to him, and he'll see it, and he makes the correction right then. You know, it's been some times he's blown me away where when I say, hey, look here, maybe you want to, you know, not – flare your elbows back as much because it's taking the butt too much time. You know, let's keep them nice and tight. So, you know, whatever whatever the situation is, and be doggone, as soon as we do the next rep, he corrects it and finishes it. You know, he corrects it and fixes it. You know, he's very, very smart. We'll correct it. You know what I mean? He's uh, he's, he's, gonna, he's a coach's dream. He's a coach's pleasure. He'll – I know the Giants will be very – happy with him when they get him coming up this fall. Like, I'm trying to get him ready for Sunday, and he's very coachable, very smart, and he's trying to work it, you know. Some kids, you'll show them something, and they're not able to make that correction right then. With Andrew, he's making it right then. So, specifically to the balance issue, what are some of the things that you've done to, to try to keep him with that balance? Because, as, as you know, Keenan, the worst thing as an offensive lineman, what you can do is be on the ground, and that's the last place you want to be. Yes, sir. Well, I do a lot of uh, drills with him as far as, like, starting at his feet. Because let's be honest, if your feet aren't right, you can't get to the block. You got to at least get to the block first. So I'm working with him a lot on keeping his arches on the ground so he can keep his balance right down the middle. But also, too, I'm giving him some weights on certain uh, drills we do. I have him with a medicine ball or a weight just to try to pull him forward so he has to resist against it and sit back. Mm. Because... Just like you mentioned, if you're leaning on the guy, you know, that setup rusher is going to get you. He said, oh, okay, you want to lean? He's going to pull you, right? This. Exactly. He's going to push-pull you, or he's going to jab step and come arm over you back inside, you know? Or the instinct rusher, he's going to see that, and he's just going to take advantage of it. You know what I mean? Yep. So we work a lot of uh, him trying to keep his uh, shoulders over, you know, not over his toes, but more straight line, his yep. posture, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, – He's been really working hard at it. You know, it's something that, you know, kind of was a little bad habit that he might have had, but he's working hard at it. And it's, uh, I got some clips that I can send you guys that he is a uh, hundred times better at it than he was a couple months ago. Ken, you talked about taking video of him and studying the video with him as well. Uh, this is a virtual off season for all of these players, especially these rookies as they enter the NFL. How well is he adapting and adjusting to the fact that a lot of his learning has to be on a screen and there can only be limited learning hands-on? 
Well, I think it's uh, I think it's good and bad. The good part is is that you know that's what he was going to do anyways. If he was at New York, they were going to be in a meeting room watching tape on the dry erase board anyway. You know what I mean? And he'd have to go home and study it on his own. You know, at night before he goes to sleep. And I think the other good part about it is that you know if he was at the facility, then they'd be out on the field trying to work it. So at least he can kind of save his body a little bit going into the season. He'll be fresher. But also, too, he's coming, you know, to dash, and we're getting on the field. We're looking at, you know, his uh, his iPad, and we're going through some of the drills that uh, Coach Colombo and Coach Wilkerson want them to work on, and we're doing those. And then also, too, I'm adding some things in because – there's a lot of stuff that I watch and I can see up close that I'd be like, hey, you know what, we need to work this a little bit more because he might be sliding back into this old habit or, hey, let's do this drill just because he's gotten better and we can add something to it. You know what I mean? Because he's far past that point of where I have to do a whole lot of fundamentals, but I still want to stay on his fundamentals. You know, I'm working a lot of this footwork just because, I mean, what's the old saying? Not the old saying, but what's the use of having a good-looking Cadillac and the rims or the tires are busted? Yep. You know what I mean? <laughs> it looks good in the driveway, but it can't get nowhere. Yep. You know what I mean? So right. I'm working a lot of his footwork so he can at least get to the block. So when you get to the block, now, hey, now it's time to play ball. You know, the one thing that was very attractive in regards to Andrew coming out of school, Keenan, were his long arms. He, that guy's got some poles, man. 36-inch arms. He's got reach. Just from an offensive lineman's perspective, can you just talk to us a little bit about, as someone that's played the position, how he can leverage that arm length and how you're working with him to leverage that arm length to make him an effective player, a more effective player? Well, you know what? Long arms, those are something that is God-given, you know what I mean? And I tell him and other kids all the time that I'm training that use those long arms that God gave you, you know what I mean? Because if you're locking somebody out, you're locking your elbows out on them and you're pressing them, one, they can't get to your body, two, you're a lot stronger. Because if you got your elbows bent, they can press you a lot more, you know what I mean? You're not as yep. strong with the elbows bent than you are with them elbows locked out. You know, unless you're Larry Allen or somebody, you can just uh, shove them <laughs> off of you and get away with that. Mm -hmm. But, <laughs> but no, it ain't too many guys pressing 700 pounds like that anymore. So he's been really working that. I'll tell you what, the other day we did an angle set drill, uh, three-bag angle set drill, and I was a little short on some people, so I ended up having to hold the bag. And so – I was uh -oh. waiting at the third bag. Yeah, you know what I'm getting ready to tell you. <laughs> so by the time he got to the third bag, was sliding out to me, he hit me in my rib so hard it almost knocked the wind out of me. <laughs> and here's the thing. He didn't he didn't have full extension. So I was like, man, that still hurts. <laughs> Imagine if he gets full extension now, he's going to knock the wind out of Russia which is what you need because guess what that's going to make you them do? It's going to make them have to start, stop and restart. Former Falcons guard Keenan Fournier uh, now working as an offensive line coach with the uh, Dash Performance Center in Georgia. Played a long time with the Atlanta Falcons. Appeared in the Super Bowl, by the way. We want to make sure we get that in for you, Keenan, because I know that was a highlight for you. Uh, but uh, let me ask. I actually didn't appear in the Super Bowl. We was in the NFC Championship. I'm sorry. Oh, that's the Morton Anderson game, right? Yeah, I was still in college uh, learning under Mike Cavanaugh. Yeah, that time. okay, my bad, we my to, bad. I got my years messed up. You good? No worries. I wish we would have got there. <laughs> <laughs> let let me uh, let me address this one with you because the Giants have said that there are going to be three offensive tackles fighting for the two starting spots: Solder, Fleming, and Thomas. So, where do you believe his skill set, Thomas's, is best suited? Left tackle, right tackle, what are the differences in your mind that he would have to overcome if he was asked to play one side or the other? Um, honestly, in my honest opinion, for me, working with him, he can go from left to right easy. You know, like he can be playing left tackle week one, injury happens, hey, Andrew, we need you to play right tackle this week. He can make that transition real easy because – in our training, I have him working both sides. You know what I mean? I have him cross-training both sides. That way, you know, I kind of train everybody from a 
from a uh, from a free agent perspective. Hey, the more value you got, the more you can stick around. But also, too, you know, you know how to play both spots. You know, and I always have him taking right tackle sets, left tackle sets. He's uh he's just as good in both of them. You know what I mean? He knows how to hold his hands on either side. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he I don't... From, he, yeah, he can go from either side easy. So I mean, I don't. I don't see him not playing either side and whichever one they need. Yeah, because I know Keenan, for some guys, and we've had different offensive linemen, you know, tell us this that have been on the show with us, that the footwork can get really wonky sometimes, you know, kick into the left, kick into the right, and it can really screw guys mm-hmm. up. But as you know, Andrew Thomas played right tackle, I think over a thousand snaps or close to it at least, as a freshman in Georgia just three years ago. So you don't see any difference right now in terms of comfort technique wise on either side. No, sir. It's like you said, you're talking about a guy that started off at right and then went to left. So he's an athlete. You know, let's, first and foremost, let's be clear about that. He's an athlete. He can play either spot with ease, you know, from what I've been seeing. You know, he, it's, you know some guys can kind of get a little confused because, oh, I'm on the right side now. I need to have my left hand right. holding back just a little bit and that right hand up just, you know, and then switching to the other side, you know, he does both of them with ease. You know, I'm try, if y'all want me to, I can send you some tapes, some clips of him kick setting to the right or kick setting to the left. I love it. You know, he is uh, he go he goes either way real good. John, y'all got y'all a, y'all got y'all a prize, man. Y'all know that y'all don't. <laughs> I don't even think y'all realize how good of a pick that was. And this is just me. I might be partial. Or not partial. I might be, you know, uh, I might be biased. Yes, I'm sorry. That's I might okay. be biased just because I'm working with the kid, but I'm just telling you what I see. You know what I mean? And when it comes to offensive line play, I'm very honest about what I see. You know, I played it for a long time. I was Falcons all decade, so I I have an idea of what I'm talking about, as y'all can kind of tell as this yeah. conversation is going. And I'm being honest with you. Drew can go left or he can go right. And don't be surprised if he's an all-rookie pick or a Pro Bowl pick his rookie year like maybe Marcus McNeil was for the San Diego Chargers back in the day. Well, Keenan, don't be surprised. Well, Keenan, I want to follow up on that because I think that this is a good big-picture question that you just talked about. As someone that's been in the league, you see how some rookies come in and they are swimming, man. They are in the deep end of the pool and they're just trying to keep their head above water. What, in your opinion makes Andrew Thomas different? What makes you think he's going to be such a good player and such a, and such a good player quickly? What is it about the kid on and off the field that gives you that type of confidence? Well, here, I'll give you a quick story. When I first met the kid, like, we had a couple sessions where we were working together, and so anytime I'm talking with someone, I like to ask them, hey, what are your goals? What are you trying to get out of this? You know what I mean? Like, out of this plan, offensive line, or going to the NFL, because you guys know as well as I do, some guys will get drafted high and go to their teams, and they shutting it down. Cruise you know, control, they got their baby. Money, they good. Yep, cruise uh-huh. control. Uh-huh. They hit, yeah, they hit that button, and they, I got my money, I'm good. Well, Drew is laid back, quiet. He says only enough, you know what I mean? He's not over-talking, or I guess you could say. But I asked him, hey, what are your goals? What are you trying to get out of this career? What do you want? And first thing he told me was he would love to get a Super Bowl, play 15-some-odd years, and get him a gold jacket. (laughs) To me, that says a lot because it wasn't about, man, I want to make a whole lot of money or, you know, nothing like that. He named, he wants a Super Bowl, play a long time, and a gold jacket. So – for those three to be your, you know, to be your goal, you got to have – there's, there's got to be some details in your process to achieving all that. You know, first off, that told me he's very interested in being the best player that he can be. You know what I mean? Which, to me, which will go well, you know, it, it'll, it'll turn out well for Saquon Barkley and uh, Daniel Jones, you know, behind him. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of guys – they get in the league, they shut it down, like I said, cruise control, they got their money. He's not worried about the money. The money will come. He's worried about doing his job to the highest of his ability. You know what I mean? And when he said that, you know, it kind of makes you just, you know, shake your head like, okay, yeah, I like this one. I like this one. 
because he ain't just going to cash it in every Sunday. You know, he's not just going to not show up to practice when his body's hurting. You know what I mean? Or if he's sore after a long week, you know what I'm saying, a training camp, he's not looking to, hey, you know, take a day off. He's going to be out there trying to grind and work on his technique. You know, the Giants, man, y'all got y'all, y'all got y'all a solid one, man. I mean, guys like that make me want to come out of retirement just so I can go play with them. You know what I mean? <laughs> I because do. they're serious about their business and they show up for work every day. They put that lunch, they put that hard hat on and they ain't talking much and he's just about to go to work and get better every day and enjoy what he does. Keenan, final question for me, because it sounds like you're of the belief that he easily could be a day one starter from the minute that this regular season opens, whenever that's going to be. Well, it's 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 quite clear that pass protection is a little bit more difficult in the NFL than run blocking. How much of a difference is there going to be? How much does his pass protection going to have to catch up to his run blocking from the minute that he steps on the field for the Giants? Um. It's going to have to change a little bit because, you know, in college you have some guys, you know, they can they, they might have one signature move. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I know he played in SEC, so he was going up against some good rushes every day, but when he steps on that field on Sunday, you're going to get somebody, they can they got their signature move, and then they can get into that counter right then, you know. You know, we just got to be talking about the three different types of rushes, the guys that predetermine what they're going to do, which you got to – which film study helps you. Then you got your instinct guys. They don't know what they're going to do. You know, kind of like an LT for you guys back in the day, the king of the Netherlands. He didn't know what he was going to do. Keenan, I got news for you. It didn't matter if you knew what LT was going to do. It didn't matter, yeah, right? But LT didn't know what he was going to do. He just come off the ball and whatever you did, hey, here I'm, here I'm coming right now. And then you got your setup guys. You know, hey, they lure you to sleep. And boom, they hit you with something because now you done got low to sleep and you're doing something out of your technique, you know. For Andrew, you know, he's just got to learn to, you know, start being ahead of the different rushers that he's going to be playing against. Start to write him a notebook, you know what I mean? And carry that notebook with him throughout his career. You know, hey, this guy does this. This guy does that. You know what I mean? And also, too, he's going to have to learn to change up his styles a little bit, you know, versus these rushers, you know. Instead of just sitting out there with high hand carries looking to double punch people, you're going to have to learn how to maybe take that outside hand, jab that outside shoulder, get their hips turned, get your second hand back on them inside. You know, you're going to have to learn how to jump set them. You're going to learn mm-hmm. have to you're going to have to learn an array of moves, just like the pass rush moves they've given you. You're going to have to give them some stuff that they're going to have to deal with too. You know. Mm-hmm. Can I steal one and more here, John? He's learning that. Sure. He's learning that right now. Yes, sir. Keenan, my, my final question, and I promise you I'm going to be honest with you this time. This is my final question. Uh, <laughs> because you studied so much tape and film with Andrew, and you, you were in the NFL for so long, and your experience is just worth a ton, could you indicate to us whose skill set in the NFL or of the players that, that you played with or you have watched, does Andrew Thomas's skill set remind you of? And is there a player – in the league now that you use some of that video to show Andrew, hey, this is some of the stuff that I'm talking about. Give a good look at this guy. Uh, as far as player comparisons, guys that I play with, I would compare him to the Philadelphia Eagles' Trey Thomas. You know, mm-hmm. as big as he is, how big and heavy his hands are when he strikes you, you know what I mean? It makes your whole body shiver. shiver. It makes the insides, you know, shake up a little bit. You know what I mean? But I would say he's probably got a – he's probably more athletic than Trey was. But same height, same, you know, arm length, everything, you know, build-wise. And he has, he doesn't even have his NFL body yet. You know what I mean? He's still got his college body. Wait till about three, four more years in that way <laughs> when he gets his NFL body. You know what I mean? What, what um, are you weighing him in at now? Uh, I haven't put him on the scale, but he looks good. He, he's good and trim. <laughs> But when I see him, I can't believe he's 326. That's what he tells me. That's, at least that's what he said the other day. He looks 290, but he's like 326. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, final question for me, uh, Keenan. As someone that's been in the league and gone through all this and has been a rookie in the NFL, 
What's going to be the biggest challenge for Andrew when he reports, God willing, knock on wood, we're back at training camp at the end of July uh, for a guy that's going to be stepping on the field and meeting everybody in person and getting settled, uh, but more importantly, on the field stuff. He hasn't had any OTAs, no mini camp. What's going to be the biggest challenge for him to get ready for the season with such a short period of time to do on-field work in a new offense with new coaches? Um, it'll just be getting into real football shape. Let's say that, you know, because that's the one thing they miss with OTAs, you know, coming off and having to actually push against another human being that's pushing back against you or, you know, having to pass that a hundred times, you know, that'll be the biggest challenge, but he'll get over that real soon. You know what I mean? Cause everybody else is going to come in the same way, but I will say he has been working hard, so he won't have that much catching up to do. But the other thing is just the speed of the NFL, the strength level, you know, because a lot of guys, they don't understand, you don't understand it till you step on the field, you know. You're so used to being the big dog, so to speak, <laughs> at your school, and then when you step on the field, hell, the first time, I, I remember my first uh, OTAs and rookie minicamp, hell, even the, the third string guys were good. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so you kind of, yeah. So you're just trying to absorb all that, you know, terminology and all the plays so you can play faster. And the more that you can absorb that, it'll allow you to play faster with more confidence. So now you, the third team guys, the second team guys, the first team guys, it's no problem with you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But that's the one thing he's going to, you know, notice right off the bat is that, hey, even these third stringers are, even, are good. And when you get to the ones, oh, man, hold on to your – hold on. 